There's a little known tool in Excel 2016 onward that automatically calculates forecasts for you and puts them in a nice chart like this. It writes the formulas and gives you options for handling seasonality and confidence intervals, among other things. Let's take a look. I'll be using this Hawaii visitor data to demonstrate. It's important that your data contains a column with dates or times at consistent intervals and a separate column containing the values. You can see here I've got a visitor count for the first day of each month. It's basically just monthly data. To insert a forecast chart, select your data or if it's in a contiguous range, just a cell in the table as mine is here. And then on the data tab of the ribbon over on the far right, we've got forecast sheet. This opens up the dialog box with a preview of the chart it's going to insert. At the top, we can choose the chart. We've got line chart or column chart. I'm going to stick with line chart for this example. And the next setting is when to end the forecast. You can see here it has forecast out six months in advance. Clicking on options reveals more settings. The forecast start by default will be the last day in your data set. You can start the forecast before the last day and sometimes we use this for seasonal data. The confidence interval is the range surrounding each predictive value. In this case in which 95% of future points are expected to fall based on the forecast with normal distribution. These are the two finer lines we see on either side of the forecast line in the chart. Or if you chose the column chart, it's the error bars that we can see on the last six columns. Now the confidence interval can help you get a feel for the accuracy of the forecast. A smaller interval implies more confidence for the specific point. Seasonality is a number for the length or number of points of the seasonal pattern and it's automatically detected. For example, in a yearly sales cycle with each point representing a month, the seasonality is 12. When the seasonality isn't significant enough for the algorithm to detect, the prediction will revert to a linear trend. Now you can override the automatic detection by choosing set manually, and then you can enter a number there. For example, here I might choose three or four cycles because I've got tourism data. Just keep in mind when setting seasonality manually, you should avoid a value of less than two cycles of historical data, because with less than two cycles, Excel can't identify the seasonal components. Next, we can choose to include forecast statistics and here Excel will automatically generate a table of statistics using the forecast.ets.stat function, including measures for smoothing coefficients and error metrics. Now, by default, the timeline range includes all the dates in your table, but you can change that here. Just keep in mind that the range must match the values range, which you can also change here. So you can see mine are both the same size and I'll leave them as is. Excel uses interpolation to handle missing points, which means a missing point will be completed as the weighted average of its neighboring points, where fewer than 30% of the points are missing. If you prefer, you can treat missing points as zeros by selecting zeros from the list here. And lastly, Excel will average values that contain the same date and time. You can choose another calculation method, such as median, if you prefer. All right, let's click Create and take a look. So you can see it's inserted a new sheet in the file. It's brought in my data. It's added in the forecast function and the forecast.ets.confint function for the confidence intervals. Now you can edit these formulas and extend them as required if you need to update your data. It's automatically going to feed through to the chart because it's linked to the table here. Now, if you chose to include the forecast statistics in the options when you created the forecast sheet, you'll see them beside the forecast table. They all use the forecast.ets.stat function and you'll notice that the third argument is simply a different number. And that specifies the statistic type to return. Now there's a link in the video description if you'd like more information on the different statistics available here. I won't go through each one and bore you. Now, you can share Excel workbooks containing forecast sheets and charts with users who have earlier versions of Excel. They'll see the table and the chart. I simply can't edit these formulas because I don't have those functions available in their version. Now if you want to make changes to the forecast, then it's important to know that the forecast sheet is not linked to your original data. You can see here all these numbers are hard keyed. 
So if you make changes to your original data, you'll need to also make those changes in this sheet here. If you add more data to this table, the chart will automatically pick it up, so you won't need to edit that. Now, one thing I like to do with these charts is apply a custom number format that wraps the month and year onto separate lines. So with the dates selected, I'm going to control one to open the formatting dialog box. And then down at custom, in here, I'm going to enter my format, which is MM for month, and then control J to force a carriage return, and then YY. You can't see the YY because it's wrapped down onto the next line and this type field isn't big enough. I'll click OK. And you can see now the chart is displaying the month and the year wrapped onto separate lines. It just fits in much easier into the chart area. I could force that to display in the table as well by setting the font to wrap and then making the rows bigger. I'll leave it as is and undo that. I don't need it for the purpose of this because my chart is picking up the wrapped effect of the month and the year. But I would like to just insert a text box just beside the axis, and that will allow me to put in a label, and I'll have to make the fonts much smaller, and we'll just right align it, change the font to a shade of gray, and we'll get rid of the outline on the text box. We might just need to reposition it slightly. So I think that's just a nicer way to display the horizontal axis, making it easier to read. Now, if you don't have Excel 2016 or later, you can still create forecasts manually using the earlier forecast function, as you can see here. And you can use confidence.norm to calculate the confidence intervals. They aren't quite as good as the newer functions that use exponential triple smoothing, and you can't factor in seasonality. I hope you found this forecast tool useful. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.